it's Tadisha Souza here and I am back to do a new YouTube video. Now, you know we have been uh, out of town for an extended vacation. It was about five weeks, so I apologize for not getting some new videos out there, but we're back and we are ready to rock and roll. So today's episode is going to be a little bit different because uh, people have been asking Chris and I, why don't you do a show on the different income streams that you have, right? You guys have heard us talk about the fact that everyone needs at least seven streams of income. And I'm not necessarily talking about your earned income as being one of them, but that's a good start. So your earned income from work or being a 1099, that could be one income stream, but the income streams I'm gonna talk about today, the ones that we have, they're the passive income streams, right? So that's your ultimate, that's where you wanna to get to. You wanna have at least seven different passive income streams. So let me talk about what those consist of. I'm not gonna talk about our earned income from uh, you know, from our businesses and things like that because it's not totally passive because we actually you know, work in our businesses, but we have a lot of different investments that some of you might be able to uh, get a hold of and some of you might not. Uh, depending on on what 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 you are doing in your situation so the first one is of course rental income you guys know rental income we love it it's something that we think is very fantastic primarily what you've heard me talk about are long-term rental properties where we're renting out a property and receiving monthly income for a long-term lease like a year or two or whatever we actually like multi-unit properties better because in our opinion there's less risk so for example if you own one rental property there's a lot more risk than owning 10 because if your one renter doesn't pay then you're out of pocket and may have to pay the mortgage on that rental but if you have 10 different rentals and one of them doesn't pay or two of them you're still going to continue to receive income from the other eight or nine and that protects you to some degree. Obviously, if everyone defaulted or didn't pay, then that would be a whole you know, bigger problem. But typically, the more of it that you have, the more rentals you have, the less risk it might be. So there's that income stream, and a second rental income stream is an Airbnb type. So that's something uh, fairly new to us. I think we started doing that maybe three years ago where we contracted with a company that finds the property, rehabs it, puts all the furniture and stuff in there. And then what they do is they have a management company come in, put the renters in, schedule, do all that, and we just get a check. So it's truly passive for us. Now, if you are managing your own Airbnb, then that's kind of your business. And so that's not exactly passive because you're working, similar to if you have a rental property and you're managing it versus having a management company manage it, then it's not truly passive, but it is another income stream, so that's great. It's a great start, but if you wanna to get to that level where you have a lot more time freedom, you have a true you know, freedom in, in all these different areas, and you're going to want to get more income streams that are truly passive. So those are two. The next income stream that I want to tell you about is royalty income. Now, a lot of people don't know really about royalties, and there's actually a lot of royalties out there. Now, I think the royalty company that I subscribe to might only be for accredited investors, I'm not sure, but you can also get royalties if you act or if you're like a model and you have commercials that you do and you continue to get royalties off those every time they show an episode of a show that you've been on or you know commercial you can also get royalties from writing a book or from intellectual property that you've created especially if you have some protection on that like US trademark or patent protection or whatever, you might be getting payments from those. I'll give you an example of something we almost bought um, that we didn't actually end up buying. On one of the royalty companies exchanges that we subscribe to, Vanessa Williams' hit song, Save the Best for Last, was actually for sale. And a bunch of people were bidding on it and it actually went way too high for the amount of income, in my opinion that it was offering and so we we backed out but that's the type of thing so if you buy that song every quarter as it gets played on the radio or you know download on itunes or whatever people play it you get a preset amount based on the number of times it plays and all that kind of stuff and so they give you historical numbers you can check all that out and it's a quarterly thing so really neat way to earn additional income and that truly is passive you can earn royalties on 
paintings or photographs of uh, famous people. I mean, there's lots of different things that you can do with that, but royalties is, is very cool. Now, another income stream, the fourth, are mortgage notes. Now, this one's pretty obvious. You can be the lender instead of the borrower where you are loaning someone the money for the mortgage for their home. And then the mortgage is security and you get monthly payments, just like the bank, principal and interest over whatever the term is on that mortgage. There are a number of websites where you can go and purchase these and, and you don't have to be accredited, anybody can buy them. And they're anywhere from 10 to 15,000 all the way up to you know hundreds of thousands of dollar mortgages. So there's a lot of opportunity out there. Once you buy it, you just keep getting that payment. Now obviously there's a chance that someone may default on that, but then you'll be able to take the asset if that ever does happen. And it hasn't happened to us yet, hopefully it never does, but uh, but that is something that's a possibility there as uh, something that you might be able to do but be sure if you have a coach if you're a TARDIS client and you have a TARDIS coach be sure to talk to your coach and have them run projections in the calculator for you so you can see how this will fit into your plan and how quickly you will be able to reach financial freedom with these types of investments okay let's talk about the next one number five peer-to-peer -peer lending notes okay so we still have lending notes we're not working with lending club anymore but of course there still is prosper we do notes at prosper so you can get peer-to-peer -peer lending notes that way and depending on if you're in canada or other places there are other peer-to-peer -peer lending platforms out there that you can access and it's basically a way for you to loan money out to people who are credit worthy and get monthly payments of principal and interest back i like those those work really well with the income snowball because of the short-term amortization of those types of investments just awesome and so that's something also to consider as far as an income stream that's truly passive okay now uh, let's talk about the next one a lot of people are going to get really hyped up over this we also have uh, crypto that we get so it's crypto loan we purchase some crypto we loan it out and we get a return on that money and so there are ways that you can do it so that the money doesn't just sit there so it's not crypto in the way that you're probably thinking uh, we're not traders we're not in there trading crypto and making money like that there are better ways to do it than others um, i've seen clients do it in ways that they can't actually really receive money or monthly income and there are ways to do it when you can so that's another income stream that we have is loans against crypto now the seventh way are loans so when you make a loan i'm not talking about a mortgage loan or peer-to-peer -peer loan a loan to somebody you know uh, I would suggest maybe staying away from close family and friends on this, okay? Uh, if they need money, just give it to them if you can, if you have it, and just let it go. But if you do decide to do that, make sure that you make everything totally legit. And whatever you do, do not overcharge them. What I mean by that is don't put an exorbitant amount of interest on your family member or your friend or is a colleague or somebody that you know make sure it's something affordable something that would be comparable to what they would get at a bank don't be a loan shark is what i'm saying and because if you do i think it will really come back to bite you and you definitely don't want to be in that situation so when you do a personal loan or a business loan make sure that the person or entity that you loan the money to can afford to make the monthly payments so extend that amortization out if you need to to make the payments reasonable uh, lower the interest rate whatever you need to do to make sure that you always are able to get your payments right if you get too greedy you know you're going to mess them up and you won't be able to get your payments so those are the seven different income streams that we have what income streams do you have uh, why don't you give us a comment below tell us what kind of income streams you have if you have some different ones we'd love to hear about them and stay tuned for our next video but uh, we're happy to share some information with you guys that you guys might be able to actually enjoy yourself. So press the like button, share this with your friends, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.